This simple program checks if you single press a button, double tap a button, or even triple press a button. So, how's it work? Let's have a look at the logic to see how this all works. So we're gonna start by adding in a keyboard. Now, unlike the mouse, which has a double click function, the keyboard object does not. So we need to create one. The way we're gonna create that is by making use of a behavior. And we're gonna add this behavior to our player. Now this can be added to any object. We, however, can't add it to the keyboard, which is why I'm gonna add it to the player. And it's just the timer. That's all we need from this side. Let's move to the event sheet. First thing on the event sheet is we need a global variable, and this is going to be called key state. And this is just going to check if our key is single pressed, double pressed, or triple pressed. And we'll start it at zero. Then I'm going to add our first event. I'm going to check if a key has been pressed. So I'm going to use the right key. Now it's really important to note at this point if you're doing multiple key presses, so you want to check for right key, left key, up, you need different key states for each one. So you might need to rename these key states to left key state, right key state. I've only got one key, so I'm just gonna keep it as key state. Other condition that we need is we need our player, and we just want to check if that timer is currently running. To begin with, the timer should not be running, so we're going to invert that, but before we do that, we're just gonna give that a name of double tap, and again, we're just going to invert that. So now we've checked for a single tap, we need to do a couple of things. First thing in our system, we're just going to set the value of key state to zero. Next, we're going to add another action and we need a really, really short wait. If we don't have this wait, when we tap the button, it will execute the code for a single tap and a double tap at the same time. However, adding this very, very short wait means that we need to wait for another code cycle before the code can execute and that would have to check for another key press again. Next, we're going to add an action, and we're actually going to start this timer now. So we're going to scroll down and start timer, and we'll start the duration. Duration indicates how much time the player's got to press the key again for it to count as a double tap. I'm going to set mine to 0.3, so when they click the button for the first time, they have 0.3 seconds to hit the button again. Believe it or not, this is quite a long time. For our tag, we're going to call it double tap, exactly the same as we did for our condition. And that's our first bit of logic set up. What's really, really nice about the way this code is set up is we can take this and copy and paste it. The only thing we need to change is just right click and invert this code. We're also going to change the key state from zero to one. And at the moment, we don't need this timer code. We'll need to bring it back if we want to triple tap, but for now, I'm just going to remove it. So now we can check for a single tap and a double tap. We now need to work out what we're going to do if we do a single tap or a double tap. Now we can add the code underneath straight away. However, this causes one major issue. If you add code underneath and then you double tap, both the single tap and double tap code will execute. This is fine if you want to do stuff like setting text because the double tap will override your text like we did in the intro. This is good for player movement speed because again, the double tap player speed will overlap the single tap player speed or if you're doing stuff like spawning objects and spawning different objects, this doesn't work. So we need a different solution. So I'm going to add an event and I'm going to take my player and I'm going to go back to my timer settings and I want the one that says on timer. So this is checking when the time is finished. And again, we just want to call the name double tap. We also want to see what key we're currently pressing and we've got a variable to check that. So we're just going to compare the key state I'm going to check it's equal to zero. So this is checking now if I single tapped and you should be aware now that this means there is going to be a 0.3 delay from you tapping the button to something happening. This is one of the pros and cons of using single taps and double taps in games, unfortunately. But we can decide what happens if we single tap. Now I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my player and I'm just going to set their maximum speed. Again, I could do this underneath the code for the single tap. It wouldn't make a difference because the double tap would override this. So I'm just going to set the max speed to 150. Next, I'm going to check this text. I'm going to scroll down and just set that text. And that text is going to be single tap. 
And finally, the most important one that does require us to have a separate condition is I'm just gonna spawn a ball in in a random position. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm just gonna create an object, not by name, and I'm just gonna take the ball. And I'm just gonna take this and take it into a random X position. So random zero and layout width. Out of all of them, the ball is the only one that if we were to not have this separate condition, we would spawn two balls every time we double tap and we don't want that. Again, once I've done that once, I can just change it to key state one, change what I want to do about the player. So I'm gonna make him move faster. I'm also going to change the text to double tap. So if I single tap, I start moving and a ball spawns. If I double tap, another ball spawns and I move a little bit quicker. And again, if I tap again, I'm back to a single click, double click, single click. So I can move between these really, really quickly and it is quite smooth. Again, you do have that minor delay between inputs. Finally then, how do we add a triple click? So once you know how to add a triple click, you can take this as far as you want, but essentially we're gonna take this line of code again and copy and paste it. This time we're just gonna change a couple of things. So we're just going to check if the double tap timer is on, we're gonna change that to triple. We're also gonna change the key state from one to two. And we just need to bring this timer back from the single click and just copy it into the double click. And once again, we're just gonna change that from double tap to triple tap. Finally, for our condition, we can just copy and paste the code previously. And we're just gonna change a couple of things. So double tap just needs to change to triple tap. Key state one needs to change to key state two. And then whatever code we want to change. So speed might be 600. My text, I definitely want to change to triple tap. And that should be it. So if we do one final test, single tap, double tap, triple tap. Thank you for watching. If you want to try this world out for yourself, I'll put a link in the description so you can try this example out. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, comment down below your future video ideas, subscribe to the channel if you're not, and I'll see you in the next one.